Slackware is the oldest Linux distribution still alive today. With the recent release of the long-anticipated Slackware 15, I figured it's time to install this Linux distribution. Before we start, huge thanks to Cameron Carter for recommending this video. Just a heads up, Slackware is not a user-friendly Linux distro. I would only recommend it for the experienced Linux enthusiasts. For this tutorial, you will need a computer with a stable internet connection, and a USB drive with a, you know, at least 4 gigabytes of space. Warning, the data on both the flash drive and the computer you install Slackware to will be completely erased beyond recovery. Make sure that anything important that you'll want to keep is backed up to a safe spot such as like the cloud or an external hard drive. First, we have to download the Slackware ISO file. Open up a web browser and navigate to slackware.com. Go to Git Slack and click Mirrors. And then select either Slackware 15 for 32-bit computers or Slackware 6415 for 64-bit computers. And if you don't know whether your computer is 32-bit or 64-bit, it's probably 64-bit, so go ahead and get the Slackware 64 version 15. Now we must download the, fl the flasher. I would recommend using the Lena Etcher as it is the easiest and it is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's cross-platform. If you're using Windows or Mac, you can just go ahead and download the installation file. If you're using Linux, you can also download the installation file. However, I find it's easier to just use the repository that it will give you. Just go and select either dev packages or RPM packages. You'll get a command line that you can enter into your terminal and then it will install the Lena Etcher right there for you. So once you have downloaded Etcher and you have the Slackware ISO file fully downloaded, we will now flash the ISO file to the USB drive and we're going to boot this USB drive to install Slackware. So just select your ISO file and select the target USB drive and flash away. Now you need to insert the Slackware installation USB you just created and access the boot menu. So most computers should just automatically boot into the USB drive if it's plugged in. So try that. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't automatically boot into your USB drive, try pressing the boot menu key. It's usually like escape, delete, F1, F2, F11, F12, enter, something like that. And if that doesn't work, go into the BIOS setup or UEFI setup and then go to boot override and then just select it from down there. If that still doesn't work, try looking up the specific instructions on how to boot from a USB drive for your specific computer. So, as I said before, the Slackware installation is not as easy, straightforward, or automated as another Linux distribution like Debian, Ubuntu, or Linux Mint, or something like that. Slackware is not targeted towards beginners, but more to experienced Linux users. With that being said, now that we've booted into the installation disk, we're gonna go ahead and install Slackware. All right, so here we are on our Slackware Live CD. We're just going to log in as root as it tells us to do. And now we need to know which drive we are going to install Slackware to. So to list the drives we have on our computer, we're going to type in fdisk hyphen lowercase l. Now, if we take a look at our drives, I'm installing this to my 32 gigabyte SD card. As you can see, dev SDB is 29.72 gigs, which is close enough to 32 gigabytes. It's not going to be exact. It's going to show an approximate size. So that's my 32 gigabyte SD card right there is dev SDB. So now that I know that information, now I'm going to type in CF disk. And then we're going to have that command followed by the drive we're going to install to, which in this case is dev sdb. All right. 
So now we have that command right there. We're going to go ahead and click enter. So as you can see, we already have a partition on here. We're just going to delete all partitions. And now warning, all data is going to be really erased when we do this. So we're just going to click delete. So now as you can see, we've got free space and we've deleted all of the partitions on this drive. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click new and we're going to make a boot partition. And let's make this about 500 megabytes. That will be our boot partition. And we're going to go to type. As you can see, it's a Linux file system and we actually don't want that. We want to change the type to EFI system. There we go. And that is our boot partition right there. Now with the rest of this free space, we're going to make a swap partition of two gigabytes right there. And as you can see, again, it formats it as a Linux file system, but we actually do not want that. We want to go to type again, but this time we're going to do Linux swap. There we go. It's our swap partition. So just a quick rundown. We've got a 500 megabyte EFI file system right here and then a two gigabyte Linux swap partition right there. Now with the remainder of the free space, which is 27 gigs, we're going to go ahead and click new. And again, we got 27 gigs. It automatically formatted it to the rest of the free space, which is good. That's what we want. But as you can see right here, it's a Linux file system. And this time we actually do want a Linux file system on there. So that's all the partitions. Now, just to clear it up, we've got 500 megabytes EFI, two gigabytes Linux swap, and then the rest is a Linux file system. With that, we are going to go ahead and click right to save the data. And we're going to type in yes, and that will save the changes. It says the partition table has been altered. So now we're going to click quit. Now that we've done that, we're going to type in setup. This will bring us to this screen right here. Now we're going to go over to target. And right here, it already brings it up. Dev SDB3 is a 28 gigabyte Linux partition. It already detected it. So we're just going to go ahead and click it. And yes, we will want it to format it as an ext4 partition. That way, everything is, you know, that way it just basically makes it so it will work better. Okay, so it's done formatting it here. We'll just click OK. Um, it says an EFI system partition was found. Would you like to format it? So it's formatting the file system. That's our boot partition. There we go. We just did that. And now here I'm just going to click no. You can click yes here and set up your windows partitions to be viewable from linux if you want but i don't really see much reason to do that so i'm just going to click no and now it's going to bring us to the source media selection and we're installing this from a usb stick so we're going to click usb stick and it says make sure the usb stick is in the port it should still be in there you should not have unplugged it <laughs> you know because we booted from it so we're just going to have it scan for that usb disk usb stick sorry so now it has the package selection this is telling us all the categories of packages that it's going to install and i'm you can deselect some of these if you want but i would recommend just clicking okay so now it's going to automatically highlight terse which is not what we want when we get to this screen select prompting mode we're just going to do full it'll just install everything this is 15 plus gigabytes of software so make sure you definitely have probably at least 20 gigabytes on your hard drive it does say it's recommended so we're just going to go ahead with the full installation mode and i will get back to you when it is done doing this all right so now it asks us if we want to make a usb flash boot we'll just click skip right here 
and it will automatically detect whether you have UEFI or BIOS firmware. So if it auto highlights installing Lilo right here, then go ahead and do it. If it auto highlights skip, then go ahead and skip. If it will auto highlight skip when it goes to eLilo or however you pronounce it, it should say install right here. So since I have UEFI, I'm gonna go ahead and install eLilo. If you have BIOS, you're just gonna have to want to install the regular ELO. Sorry, Lilo. So I'll go ahead and install eLilo. And we'll do install. Basically, just click whatever it auto highlights right here. And just click yes. All right. And then now here at the mouse, again, you'll probably just want to click whatever it auto highlights. All right. So. Would you like to try out some custom screen fonts? We'll go ahead and click no. You can if you want, but let's get that out of the way. Again here, just click what it auto highlights. And then now you're gonna wanna select your time zone. All right, so now again here, just click whatever it auto highlights. So now we have the default window manager for X. Now, if you did the full installation, it should come with KDE, XFCE. Those are our two desktop environments right there. Then we have all these window managers, Fluxbox, Blackbox. These are all window managers. I'd highly recommend using one of these, KDE or XFCE, as it's a full, complete desktop environment. I'm gonna go with the KDE Plasma desktop says no root password is detected would we like to set one we're gonna click yes and the new password we're just gonna create a new password okay so now it says everything is complete so we'll go ahead and click exit now we may unplug the Slackware installation media. Now we'll go ahead and click OK. And then we will reboot. And that is it. We have installed Slackware. Just make sure that it doesn't come fully configured. It's not a ready-made distro. You do have to configure this Linux distribution. Definitely stay tuned. Make sure you see that configuration video when it comes out.